video number two on exponents and we are still on rules one through three. So a quick review here. Uh, we learned that when you had x to the second times x to the third, you end up adding the exponents. So this is what happens, the two plus three. Now you don't have to show this. You just show your answer, x to the fifth, okay? Um, and of course, we also learned that sometimes we have coefficients um, out in front of the variables, kind of like a four or five x to the third times four x to the fifth. Okay, well, right here, you just rearrange it, put the coefficients, the five and the four, uh, put them together and put the x's together because it's all multiplication between all the terms. So you could rewrite this as five times four times x to the third times x to the fifth. And five times four, when you think about five times four, that's 20. So your answer has a, a coefficient of 20. And then x to the third times x to the fifth is x to the eighth. You simply add the exponents. That was rule uh, one. And it doesn't matter if you have just x's or x, y's, and z's, or a, b's, and c's, you could just rearrange them. So right here, for example, you just take the coefficient two, coefficient three, two times three, and then I would take the x's, the x to the second, x to the third, and put them together. And then I would take the z to the fifth and z to the fourth, write them together. Um, and later on, once you get really comfortable with this, you don't even have to show this work. You could just add them up in your head, right? So two times three is six. X to the second times X to the third is X to the fifth. Out of the exponents, Z to the fifth times Z to the fourth is Z to the ninth. Five plus four is nine. That's your final answer, and that's a complete review on rule one. Again, that's rule one. And you don't have to memorize uh, rule one, rule two, rule three. Um, you have to memorize the rules, but you don't have to remember which one's number one, which one's number two. But this is the first rule that we learned. Uh, when you have the same base and you're multiplying, just add the exponents. Let's move on to rule two. Rule two was when you had a power to a power, you multiply, so x to the sixth is your answer right there. So rule two, rule two is pretty basic, and of course you could have a power to a power to a power. So you could have like x to the second, to the third, um, and then a bracket, and then to the fifth. And then you'd have, uh, okay, two times three, that's six, and then six times five, that's 30. So your answer is x to the 30th. Uh, nice and easy. So rule two is pretty straightforward. Rule three is the one that gets a little challenging. Rule three is where you have parentheses um, with an exponent on the outside. So like let's say I had a three x, y to the third, z to the fifth. Okay, so when you have parentheses and a monomial on the inside, that means that there's no addition or subtraction. Uh, it's all one term with a bunch of multiplication. With an exponent on the outside of the parentheses, you distribute that outside exponent to each and every inside exponent, and when you have a power to a power, you multiply. So this part's not confusing. Uh, this is pretty easy. You just distribute. There's really an invisible one on the three and an invisible one on the x. Now, when you go two times one, you get three, but to the second power. Two times one, you get x, but to the second power. Two times three, you get y to the sixth power, and two times five, you get z to the 10th power, two times five is 10. And the only other thing you could do right there is a three squared. Three squared is really three times three. So your final answer is nine x squared, y to the sixth, z to the 10. So that's pretty easy, rule three. However, let's uh, take a look at this uh, interesting one. Actually, that, that's not interesting at all, that's super easy. You just distribute it to each and your answer will be two to the third, um, x to the third, and two to the third is eight because two times two times two is eight. So you have eight x to the third. Okay, I guess the one I wanted to look at that's a little more interesting is if you had something like two x on the inside, but let's say it was a negative two x, and let's say this was squared. Um, this becomes a little more interesting because it's very easy to make the mistake, especially if you've been uh, working with these rules a lot, it's easy to make the mistake to take the two and put it right on the two to the one and think that this minus sign is not included. See, the truth is, right here you have parentheses, and this is a negative, even though it's a 2x, or it could be a 2xy, it could be 2x to the second, y to the third, z to the fifth. It doesn't matter what this is or how long and ugly it is, it is negative. So you really have a negative term right here. It's like a negative number. And if you go negative, whatever this is, and you square it, that's gonna be a negative times a negative, which becomes a positive. Okay, so this is a slightly confusing part. 
Um, you need to know that because there's parentheses right here, the negative is included, so you can't just put the, the two on the negative two, that would be incorrect. You have to first know that this whole thing is gonna be positive because a negative times a negative is positive. So your answer is positive, and you could distribute after knowing the fact that it's gonna be a positive answer. Okay, so then you'll have the two squared and the x squared. Okay, so two squared is four, and x squared comes down. So that's your final answer for this problem right here. In parentheses, negative 2x, and then on the outside to the second power, on the outside of the parentheses to the second power, that answer is positive 4x squared. Okay, I guess to really understand this, let's go to something very, very basic that could be confusing. We did this yesterday, but once again, let's compare. Uh, when you have parentheses and there's a negative on the inside, and you have a power on the outside, it's really saying negative 3 times negative 3. That's the, remember, the 2 tells you how many times to multiply the base with itself. And the parentheses, what they do is make the base include that negative sign. Over here, there's no parentheses, so that negative does not belong to the base. Okay, So on the top example, uh, you do write out this base two times. So the negative 3, negative 3. And of course, we know that a negative 3 times a negative 3 is positive 9. You don't have to put the plus sign, but that's your answer, positive 9. Now, on the bottom one, what you need to do, it's kind of like, here's the explanation, guys. The negative, it's kind of like saying negative 1 times, okay? So what do we do first in PEMDAS? You guys, you guys remember PEMDAS? up in the front corner of our classroom, we, we always do parentheses first, then exponents, and then multiplication. So very important that we do exponents before multiplying. So we just said we're going to do exponents before multiplying, according to PEMDAS. So that's why we don't include the minus sign, OK? So you have to do the exponent, the 3 squared. You have to do that first. And 3 squared is really 3 times 3. Now, the negative, or the negative 1, if you want to call it, that you're going to multiply by, it, you put it out here in the front. So you could either put it as negative or you could put it as negative one times. Either way, your answer is going to be negative, okay? So this is a negative nine. Okay, so big difference. If there's a minus sign included, uh, then you have to write that minus sign on each of the terms when you expand it. If the minus sign is not included, you just put that minus sign in the front. Or you could call it a negative one times if you want. It's totally up to you. Let's go to something even easier to, to really uh, get us an understanding of this. How about how about uh, negative one to the second power? That answer is going to be negative one. Why is that? Well, because remember, you do the uh, negative one. You do the one squared first, so one times one, and then you take that minus sign that's in front and you just put it out there. Okay, so that's really a negative one, as opposed to negative one squared. Then what's that? Okay, negative 1 squared, that's really a positive 1. Why? Because you really do have the negative 1 inside the parentheses. There's a negative sign inside the parentheses. So it's really negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. So let me clear up this space here. Um, and let's, let's work with that negative 1 inside the parentheses. So negative 1 squared, we said that's positive 1. How about uh, negative 1 to the third power? What would that be? Well, that would be negative 1. Why is that? Well, because if you actually wrote the base out three times, remember the exponent tells you how many times to write it, how many times to multiply it with itself, it would be negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. And of course, a negative 1 times a negative 1, that's positive 1, right? So you really have a positive 1 times the above negative 1, which takes you back to negative 1. So negative 1 to the third power is negative 1. How about negative 1? to the fourth power. Well, negative 1 to the fourth power, that would be, expanding it, negative 1 times itself four times. And of course, a negative and a negative is a positive. A negative and a negative is a positive. So your final answer should be positive 1. OK? Um, and there's many ways uh, of doing it. You could pair them up the way I did right here. Or you could just say, OK, negative times a negative is positive times a negative takes you back to a negative times a negative takes you back to a positive. Let's continue. So just to sum it up again, negative 1 to the second power, that's really a positive 1. Uh, negative 1 to the third power, that's really a negative 1. Negative 1 to the fourth power, that's really a positive 1. If I go negative 1 to the fifth power, 
What's that going to be? Let's expand it. There it is. One, two, three, four, five. There's five of those negative ones. I'm multiplying all of them together. Now, at this point, you should start seeing the pattern and you should come to the conclusion and you should be able to create your own shortcut as opposed to me telling you what the rule is. Okay. So as you could see, or as we know, a negative times a negative is a positive. So if you're able to, to pair them up, Okay, that's a pair of negative ones. When you multiply it together, that's a positive one. Here's a pair of negative ones. So when you, when you multiply those together, you get a positive. And there's an, a leftover negative one. So it's really like if you had positive times a positive times a negative, well, that's going to be negative one. Okay, now as you can see, look at the pattern. Negative one squared is a positive. Negative one to the third is a negative. Negative one to the fourth is a positive. Negative one to the fifth is a negative. So you should be able to, to understand and conclude what negative one to the, uh, let's say, 12th power is. Negative one to the 12th power, is that gonna be positive one or negative one? Let's think about this. If we were to expand, there's 12. And we know that if you're able to pair them up, now when I say pair them up, that's saying if, if, if this number is divisible by two, if it's an even number, you're going to be able to pair up all the negatives. So look, it's a pair, 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 pair. So the answer, you know that a pair gives you positive. So it's all going to be positive. Okay, so it's all positive. So your answer is positive one. So the shortcut, the conclusion that you guys should be making right now is if you have parentheses with the negative on the inside, and you have an even power, then your answer will be positive because you're able to pair them all up. Because if it's even, they're gonna pair up. There's not gonna be any one single one left over. But if it's odd, as you could see, pairs up, pairs up, there's one left over, which makes it negative. So once again, if you have parentheses with a negative on the inside and your exponent is even, then your answer will be positive. If you have parentheses with a negative on the inside and you have an odd power, then there's going to be an odd one out. It's going to be a leftover, so your answer will be negative, okay? So if we look at negative 1 to the 97th power, now it'd be ridiculous to expand it. I'm not going to do that. It would take up the whole screen here. Um, but I do know that it's an odd exponent, so if I were to expand it, my terms would not pair up. There would be one left over. There would be one odd, odd uh, negative one out. So this would cause it to be a negative answer. So your answer is negative one. Likewise, if I had negative one to the uh, 207th power, that's still going to be a negative one. Or negative one to the uh, 96th power. I know that that's going to be positive one. Why is that? That's because the exponent is even. And if I were to write this base out negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 96 times, I know because it's divisible by 2, I know I'll be able to pair them each up. So I could like do negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So I'd be able to pair them all up and my answer would be positive. So this is a very important uh, fact to know, a bit very important uh, rule that you guys should have created already by seeing these examples. And the rule is, when you have uh, parentheses with the negative on the inside and your exponent is odd, then you're going to end up with a negative answer. But if your exponent is even, you're going to end up with a positive answer. Okay. Now, when you're doing negative 1 as your base, well, yeah, it's either going to be negative 1 or positive 1. But this rule also comes in handy when you don't have a negative 1 as a base. Like, let's say you had negative 2. Negative 2 to the, and let's go with uh, an even power, negative 2 to the 6th. Okay, I already know that my answer is going to be positive. Why is that? Because I have a negative on the inside of the parentheses. I have an even power, which means I'll be able to pair up all the negatives, which converts everything to become a positive answer, as opposed to having a negative 2 to the, uh, let's say, 7th power. I know that that answer is going to be negative. So I already know that the top answer is going to be positive. I already know that the bottom answer is going to be negative. Now, let me just uh, show you right here on the side. Let me expand the top one. So there it is expanded in blue. And I know that each uh, pair of negatives will become positive. Like negative 2 times negative 2 
that is four, right? And negative two times a negative two, that is four as well. And negative two times a negative two, that is four as well. So you could actually do four times four times four. And four times four is 16, and 16 times four is 64. So my answer really is positive 64. See, uh, I knew that my answer was gonna be positive because of the negative that's included in the parentheses and the exponent is even. If there's a negative included in the parentheses and the exponent is odd, I already know my answer is gonna be negative. Let me expand that for you to, to prove it to you. So, of course, this is without a calculator. I'm doing this all, all in my head here. Uh, negative two times negative two, that's four. Negative two times negative two, that's four. Negative two times negative two, that's four. So I really have four times four times four. And then there's a left over negative two. So I need to bring that down and multiply by negative two. So let's think about this. We have negative four times four, that's 16. 16 times four, that's 64. And 64 times negative two, all right? You have 64 times negative two. That becomes negative 128. So my answer is negative 128. Now, I didn't know the answer right off the top of my head. I actually had to work it out, but I did know that the answer was negative. Why is that? Because I have a negative included in the parentheses and I have an odd exponent. Okay, so, so let's get that, let's understand that, that when you have a negative on the inside of the parentheses, an odd exponent, your answer should be negative. When you have a negative on the inside of the parentheses with an even exponent, your answer will be positive. So I think this uh, truth becomes in handy uh, when we look at our homework, particularly on number 21. Okay, um, again, the rule, rule three that we have learned is to distribute the outside exponent to each and every inside exponent. So it's really easy to make the mistake and leaving this negative right there, which would be wrong. Okay, that would be wrong. What you need to do is right from the start, understand that this is a positive answer. Now, why is it positive? Because you have negatives inside the parentheses. So here are your parentheses, there's a negative. So you really have a negative number. You could call it negative six or negative 64, whatever. It doesn't matter what this nasty number is. It could be negative six P, could be negative six PQR, could be negative six P to the second, Q to the fifth, Z to the nine, whatever. It doesn't matter what it is, you know that it's negative and you know that you're squaring this negative number. So when you square a negative number, that's really a negative times a negative, which gives you a positive. Now, if this would have been uh, an odd power, then the answer would be negative. Uh, again, what we just went over, if your power's even, you're gonna be able to pair up all the negatives, which will make it positive. If your power's odd, it's gonna be a negative answer. So in this case, your answer is positive. Please do not make the mistake of saying that your answer is negative 36. Your answer is positive 36 P squared. I'm not sure if there's any other ones on this worksheet. Uh, 22, okay. But then again, yeah, that's about it. It will pop up a lot more on future homeworks. Um, so right here, once again, we have parentheses with the negative on the inside, okay. So if it's even, it's gonna be positive, your answer. If it's odd, it's gonna be a negative, your answer. So we know it's odd, we know that our answer is going to be negative. So right here, we are gonna put equals negative, okay? And then you could just worry about distributing the three to the one, three to the one. Uh, and remember, a power to a power, you multiply. So you really have three to the third, um, y to the third. And we already know that the answer is gonna be negative. So when we simplify, we don't even have to think of it as negative three. You just bring down the negative and go um, three to the third. Three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27. Bring down to the y to the third, and there's your answer, negative 27, y to the third. So that rule is very important that you understand that. When you have negatives on the inside of the parentheses and your exponent is odd, your answer is gonna be negative. When you have uh, negative on the inside of the parentheses and your exponents even, then your answer is gonna be positive. So there's one more uh, slight detail that we're gonna be uh, working with 
with rule three. Remember, rule three is where you have parentheses with an exponent on the outside. Now, if you did have like two x to the third, then you distribute it to each term. Um, so you'd have two squared x to the sixth, power to a power you multiply. Uh, so you'd have four x to the sixth. Now, let's say, again, rule three is distributing the outside exponent to the inside. And as long as you don't have addition or subtraction in here, you're good to go. Um, what I want to do right now is actually change what's inside the parentheses. I want to actually make it, let's say, 2x to the third over y to the fifth. Yes, we will have fractions inside the parentheses. I know you're thinking, what? So the thing is, the rule still stands. Is there any addition or subtraction anywhere in here? No. There's division. The fraction bar is really division. And that's fine because, remember, we like multiplication. We like division. Multiplication and division are pretty much the same thing. Um, so the rule still holds here. You have parentheses with an exponent on the outside. What do we do when we have this? You distribute it to each and every inside exponent, and you multiply them. So on the inside, we have an exponent of 1. We also have the exponent of 3, exponent of 5, and a power to a power you multiply. So we're going to take this 2, and we're going to distribute it to the 1 right there, and you're going to end up with 2 to the second. Take the 2, distribute it to the 3, and you're going to have x to the power to a power you multiply. 3 times 2 is 6. And on the bottom, you're going to take that 2 and distribute it to the power of 5 right there. y to the 5 times 2 is 10. Okay. Now, the only, I mean, that's your answer, but the only other thing you could do is simplify this 2 squared. 2 times 2 is 4. So the final answer is 4, x to the 6th, y to the 10. Let's have you guys try one. So we have this problem right here. There are parentheses. There is an exponent on the outside. Um, and on the inside, there is no addition or subtraction. There's multiplication, multiplication, and division. That's totally fine. So we do use the rule, take that power, and distribute it to each and every inside exponent. And remember, a power to a power, you multiply. So uh, when I distribute, I'm going to take the 3 and put it right there on the 2. A power to a power, multiply. So I will end up with x to the 6th. And then take the 3, put it on the y, which there's an invisible 1. 3 times 1 is 3. And on the bottom, I take the 3 and put it on the invisible 1 right there. And 3 times 1 is 3, so I have 3 to the third. And then take the 3 and put it on the 5, power to a power multiply. 5 times 3 is 15, so I have z to the 15. So that's my answer. However, I could simplify the 3 to the third. The answer is not 9 down there. It's actually 27. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. And of course, I'm going to write, uh, rewrite everything else. The x to the 6th up here, the y to the 3rd, and also the z to the 15. That is my final answer for that one. Let's try one more. So we have this fraction in the parentheses. And we have an exponent on the outside. There's no addition or subtraction, so I am able to distribute it to each and every term. You know what? Let's make this more interesting. Let's put a negative sign in front of this fraction. So we have this fraction, but it is negative, okay? Now let's think about what we learned on this video here. This whole number, whether it's a fraction, whether it's a long, disgusting number, or a small, nice number, it is negative. This is saying negative something to the second power. So we said when you have a negative to the second power, a negative times a negative is a positive, right? So as long as your exponent is even, your answer will be positive. If your exponent were odd, like a 3 or a 5 or a 7, then your answer would be negative, okay? So let's uh, distribute. And we already know that the answer is going to be positive. So I don't even have to worry about this guy anymore. But let's distribute 2. There's an invisible 1 right there. That's going to be 2 to the second power. And then 2 right there on the 3, that's going to be at x. 2 times 3 is 6. On the bottom, 2 on the 3, that's going to be 3 squared. 2 on the y squared, it's going to be y to the fourth, power to a power multiply. And then 2 on the 1, there's an invisible 1, z to the 1, that's going to be z to the second. The only other thing you could do is simplify 2 squared and 3 squared. Final answer, 4x to the sixth over 9, 
y to the fourth, z to the second. That's your final answer for that one. One more, guys. So we do have negative something to the ninth power. That's an odd exponent. Is your answer going to be positive or negative? Everybody should say my answer is negative. When it's even, you're able to pair them all up, and a negative times a negative, when you pair them up like that, it becomes positive. But when it's odd, there's going to be a negative left over, so that's going to be a negative answer. Okay, so now it's just a question of distributing the outside exponent to each of the insides. So 9 right there will give you uh, x to the 18. 9 right there will give you y to the 45. 9 right there will give you a z to the 36. And that's your final answer right there. It is negative. You have to put the negative. I hope uh, this lesson helps, helps you understand the first three rules of exponents better. These were the first three rules uh, that we went over. It, it's on the board in class. Um, if you really want a better understanding, uh, please make sure you watch the first video on these uh, three rules that I posted uh, the day before yesterday.